one thing that you would have thought would be a little bit on the nose. Like we we understand that the government hates freedom of speech. They hate you know fundamental basic human rights. They hate you know us being able to do stuff. Right? They hate it. And one thing that gets you know sneered at a lot is where people go, "This is literally nineteen eighty four. This is literally like nineteen eighty four. Uh, however, this is a little bit on the nose. Biden blasted for policing free speech with dystopian disinformation bureau. The disinformation bureau. Another another word for the Ministry of Truth. Basically a government body that gets to decide what's true. The government, you know, has the monopoly on many other things. It now also has the monopoly on truth. Or at least it's trying, trying to get there. Uh, oh, big brother. <laughs> uh, President Biden came under fire Thursday for the creation of a dystopian disinformation bureau created under his Homeland Security Department. It's going to be Homeland Security that run it. Uh, which critics are blasting as just a way for the government to police free speech online, and that is exactly what it is. I'm, my throat's fucked and everything, by the way, sorry. Uh, one thing that they don't tell you, everyone's like, ah, why are you sick, like, all the time? Why are you sick all the time? Well, right now, my glands are like fucking footballs and my throat feels like sandpaper. And one thing that they don't tell you about having a child, right, is when you send that child to nursery, they pick up every single disease that every other child at the nursery has. And then they bring it home to you, which is uh, great. It's so much fun. It's excellent. And whenever, whenever you talk to parents, you go, when does that stop? They say, around five or six. Super. That's great. So yeah, I mean, building up definitely building up a lot of Im immunizations to everything, but you know it's uh, feeling like shit all the time. It's not fun. Uh, President Biden came under fire Thursday for the creation of a dystopian disinformation bureau created under his Homeland Security Department, which critics are blasting. I have just read this part that shows how unwell I am. Conservatives slammed the Department of Homeland Security's Orwellian New Disinformation Governance Board, with some suggesting the timing is convenient given Elon Musk vowed to make Twitter a free speech uh, haven after his $44 billion takeover of the social media platform, noto notorious for selectively censoring right-leaning points of view. And that is basically Elon Musk taking over Twitter. That is exactly why this got made. That is exactly why this got made. Basically because, like I've said in previous videos, the power to shift the narrative that Twitter has, that made me believe that they will never allow Musk to buy that. They will never allow that. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Uh, because of the power it has to, over time, you know, shape the opinions and perspectives of millions and millions of people. However, it seems that Musk has in fact bought it and a lot of governments and other such places are not fucking happy about that so because there's another video i'm going to be doing soon about uh, how the eu are threatening to ban twitter as a whole can't have people talking and pointing out sketchy things the government's doing now can we this is why basically they're like oh no this guy's going to allow the people that don't like us to to speak and expose all the shady shit that we are up to so we're going to make a ministry of truth we control truth citizen you don't the citizenry do not the population does not. We control truth. We decide what's true. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley called the new board a disgrace that was designed to monitor all American speech. In a letter to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, Hawley said he initially thought Wednesday's announcement was satire. Surely no American administration would ever use the power of government to sit... Uh, in judgment in the, on the First Amendment speech of its own citizens, sadly, I was mistaken, Holly wrote. Rather than protecting your border or the American homeland, you've chosen to make policing American speech your priority, which is essentially like the NSA stuff. What's that whole thing about the three eyes? Uh, where it's illegal to spy on your own citizens, so what you do is you get another foreign country to spy on your citizens for you. And because uh, basically... Uh, and then, in turn, you get them to spy on your citizens. That way it's nice and legal. So basically, uh, America and Britain have an agreement. America spies on our citizens and reports anything untoward to the British authorities. And Britain spies on American residents and reports anything untoward to the American authorities. Nice and legal. Uh, Florida Republican caught, and this is the woman who kind of looks like... I don't know, she just looks like if a fart was a person... Like, <laughs> there's something wrong with her, like the fucking crimson chin here. That big, the, the big schneeb. 
so that she can I can I can smell I can smell false information. Do you remember do you remember Okie Doke? Like that children's TV show a few years ago. I don't know if you if you watched it in Gaelic it's a uh, Doki Eye. Doki Eye, but uh, for I think in England it was called uh, Okie Doke. She she looks like Okie Doke. Uh, Florida Republican congressional candidate Dr. Willie J. Montague tweeted, is there anything more dystopian than a disinformation and go disinformation governance board run by the federal government? Well, there are many things more dystopian. However, this is extremely dystopian. It literally is a ministry of truth. And Texas GOP Congressman uh, Troy Neal's griped, they didn't need a disinformation governance board until Elon Musk threatened their control over the narrative. And yes, that is exactly why this is being made. Basically, if the Biden administration or the Democrats or the US government as a whole or any various three-letter agencies are up to no good. The internet became a very, very powerful tool to get the message out there and to bring them down and discredit them and basically seek punishment for it. Because one thing that people don't really know about is uh, Jimmy Savile. How was Jimmy Savile able to continue doing what he did for like 50 fucking years? The internet. When the internet came along, that's how he got caught. Because back in the day, you know, you had like telephone and telegrams and new like newspapers and letters and stuff like that, but there wasn't a platform like the internet for everyone to go out and have their voices heard. Some person may have thought he was just they were just a one-off victim of Jimmy Savile, but then they all started talking online, and what happened was all the people who were victims started congregating in one place, and when people realised they weren't alone, boom, there you go, it all starts coming out about Jimmy Savile. So the internet became a extraordinarily powerful tool to bring down people who are in power, institutions, things like that, because like-minded people would be able to uh, find each other and have chats and discussions uh, about, you know, various things they wanted to talk about, and then they would form a group and a bond and blah, 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 you know the rest. Uh, and various three-letter agencies and institutions and governments are fucking terrified of that and they don't like it, you know? See how the 2004-2005 internet, which was just uh, the Wild West, the Wild West back then, anything fucking went. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to see that again, at least not while states are a thing. Uh, she too called the news dystopian and said the left can't afford to let the truth be anything but what they say, which is also correct. The hashtag Ministry of Truth was also trending on Twitter as critics of... of blah, Critics compared the new board to George Orwell's 1984 novel. Adolf Hitler had the Ministry of Truth. Joseph Goebbels had the Ministry of Truth. Joseph Stalin had the Ministry of Truth. Joseph Biden has a Ministry of Truth, tweeted Errol Weber, GOP congressional candidate uh, in California. Uh, Georgia Representative Andrew Clyde added, Biden's dystopian disinformation governance board is seriously dangerous and wholly unconstitutional. I'm demanding Congress investigate DHS Ministry of Truth now. The newly formed panel will target uh, supposed misinformation aimed at key points of vulnerability for Biden and Democrats, such as southern border migrants, as well as monitor and prepare for Russian disinformation threats as this year's midterm elections near, the DHS said. Yeah, I'm sure that's all you're going to be doing. Uh, the spread of disinformation can affect border security, American safety during disasters, and public trust in our democratic institutions. You mean the things that you absolutely should not fucking trust. Uh, the department said in a statement, DHS said that the board will protect privacy. No, no, you won't. You, you won't, though. Civil rights. No, you won't. And civil liberties. No, you won't as part of its duties. It's a case of... <laughs> If people say something that we don't like or something that we, the state, have not deemed to be true, then we will censor it and correct the record. That's not, that's information manipulation. Doesn't matter if the information is correct or false, you are changing the message of what someone put out there. You are trying to gain control of the narrative. That's what this is, narrative control. Right? And in order to control a narrative to the extent that you would like, then you must infringe on privacy, infringe on civil rights, and infringe on civil liberties. You cannot control a narrative without breaking all three of these things. So you're lying. Oh my god, can't believe the government's lying. <laughs> What's the world coming to? The board will be led by Nina Jankowicz, a disinformation expert, 
Aye. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the person that was, uh, she tweeted about uh, Trump's pesky and all that stuff as well. So, yeah, she is an expert on disinformation, you know, uh, putting it out there. Uh, who has been criticised for repeatedly casting doubt on the post reporting about Hunter Biden's laptop, because, of course, you need to, like a good little doggy, you have to defend your masters. White House Press Secretary Jean Psaki says that she didn't have details on the board's role or its executive director during her Thursday press briefing, but said President Biden supported the effort. He... He that man doesn't even know where he is. I I guarantee he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I guarantee you, he had no idea what he was just asked. Uh, we know there has been a range of disinformation out there about a range of topics. I mean, including COVID, for example, and also elections and eligibility. Saki said, but I will check to see if there are more specifics. You're not allowed to question an election. You're not allowed to question the outcome of an election. Well, that just not. I thought this was to protect democratic institutions. Surely you should be allowed to, you know, question an election. Surely. The backlash over the creation of the board came as the Biden administration also unveiled an international declaration for the future of the internet. That's one of these, ah, oh, we'll call it something nice and lovely when it's actually horrible. With 50 other countries on Thursday that endorsed efforts to also curb online disinformation and harassment. What is disinformation? Whatever the government deems it to be. What is harassment? Whatever the government deems it to be. The document outlines ideas for reclaiming the promise of the internet <laughs> the, and US officials described it as an effort to counter the practices of countries including China and Russia. It notably doesn't mention uh, domestic US struggles over internet freedom such as politically motivated censorship of news, news stories by private companies and alleged illegal government mass surveillance. Because of course it doesn't. These are the things that we are allowed to do, citizen. Uh, the term disinformation has been used to censor content that later gains broad acceptance, such as the post reporting on documents from Hunter Biden's laptop, which Twitter blocked and Facebook throttled, and speculation that COVID-19 leaked from a Chinese lab, which Facebook banned before US intelligence agencies later found the scenario one of two plausible pandemic origin theories. So, yep, there was people who says this came from a lab, people were then banned from that, it then came out that, oh, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe it did come from a lab, and all those accounts were still banned, you know, everyone says that, what's, what's the phrase that goes, today's conspiracy theories will be, in six months' time, will be today's truths. Uh, the vague document uh, doesn't describe a specific remedy for disinformation, but does call for governments to foster greater exposure to diverse cultural and multilingual content, information and news online. Yeah, you're going to allow news from foreign countries to uh, appear. Have you ever actually read news uh, in foreign nations about like Britain and America? We are the fuck it. Oh, we are the bad guys of the world. We are the bad guys. <laughs> Uh, exposure <coughs> 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 like I said my glands are like fucking footballs exposure to diverse content online should contribute to pluralistic public discourse foster greater social and digital inclusion digital inclusion within society bolster resilience to disinformation and misinformation and increase participation in democratic processes so basically we should allow all these other different types of content except the ones that we don't like that's interesting that's a funny, that's a really, really, really funny way of going about it. The new document is signed by many US allies, including the governments of France, Israel, Japan and the UK. That's a, surprising. Uh, but the list doesn't include many of the largest but relatively poor democracies, because the poor democracies, who give a fuck about them? Who give a fuck about them? Uh, Brazil, India, Nigeria, Pakistan and the Philippines, you know, countries that are very well known for their uh, dedication to freedom of speech and human rights. Imagine, imagine literally being a more pro-free speech than, like, Nigeria and Pakistan or the Philippines with fucking Duterte, who's a fucking maniac. But yeah, uh, this is a literal ministry of truth. This is the state gaining the monopolization over deciding what is and is not fact. And one thing that gets brought up a lot is you make the state the ultimate decision maker in all forms of conflict, even those involving itself. So for example, if I punched you in the street and you went into the courtroom so that I could get charged with assault and you found out that I was the judge on my own trial, well, you would not find that very fair, would you? Because I would just be able to go, I've decided that I am not guilty. 
Use my Ribena as a gavel. Yeah, I've decided I'm not guilty. Goodbye, which is what happens in all the instances whenever the government is involved in conflict, because it can then always rule in its own favour. Which means in a disinformation, ministry of truth, right, let's call it what it is, a ministry of truth, controlled by the government, it will be able to deem anything detrimental to it disinformation and anything that sort of explains away the shady shit that it's doing as truth. You know, it's the ultimate form of control. And that is exactly why they're bringing this in.